Today on Upfront, Battleground Wisconsin. We're the next stop on the road to the White House. The campaigns are here in force, even the Trump campaign. Next, we'll hear from a Trump supporter on the appeal of the controversial candidate. Then, state Supreme Court candidate Joanne Kloppenberg, her answer to critics who say she's soft on crime. And big turnout predicted for Wisconsin's April 5th election, with record turnout in other states should you plan on extra time to vote. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello and welcome to Upfront. Mike Goucher is off today. I'm Joyce Garbasiak. All of the action in the race for president is now shifting to Wisconsin. Our April 5th presidential primary is the only contest in the next two weeks. Political observers say Wisconsin is crucial for a couple of campaigns, mainly those of Republican Ted Cruz and Democrat Bernie Sanders. Here's just a sample of what we're seeing with more to come. The television campaign commercials have started. Bernie Sanders held a rally in Madison yesterday. Chelsea Clinton did three stops for her mom, Democrat Hillary Clinton, on Thursday. Ohio Republican Governor John Kasich held a town hall in Wauwatosa Wednesday. Republican Senator Ted Cruz and his wife Heidi are doing a series of events in the state. And Donald Trump, whose campaign opened offices here last we week, plans a rally in Janesville on Tuesday. Now for months now, Trump has defied conventional wisdom with his unconventional campaign. We're talking more about it with Trump supporter Van Mobley, professor at Concordia University of Wisconsin and a blogger at JS Online. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm curious as to how it is you came to support Trump. Was he your man from the get-go? No, I supported Scott Walker originally. Um, he's a favored son, and um, I know him. I've met him before, so I was pleased to support him. And um, then when he dropped out, I had to look for another candidate. My wife actually suggested to me that I take a look at Trump, and I did. Okay, all right. So what is it about Trump that appeals to you? Well, one thing is, um, and this, some of these issues that I'll go over Actually, a multitude of candidates appeal to me on, and of the three that are remaining, I'm a Republican. I'll support whoever the nominee is of those three. Uh, the first thing is on education. I am an educator. I don't like Common Core. I don't think it should be passed. And both Cruz and Trump are against Common Core, so I'm interested in that. Uh, Kasich is a little bit weaker on that issue from my perspective. Okay. Secondly, on trade. Um, I think Donald Trump is the strongest against the Trans-Pacific Partnership and it needs to be renegotiated. Now other candidates have come along in, in Trump's wake. For example, Ted Cruz has now basically said that it needs to be renego renegotiated as well, although originally he was sort of gave hints that he was going to be for it. So he's flip-flopped on that and Kasich um, uh, is for it. I don't think Obama trade is a good idea. I think Obama uh, did a poor job of, uh, negotiating the Iran uh, deal, and I think he's done a poor job negotiating uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think it's better that the next president uh, negotiate that the trade deal. Okay, and uh, the third? The third one is, I know that um, I like that Donald Trump's stance on defense, and I know sometimes people attack him for not having the temperament of a, a president. I look at it a little bit differently, and let's compare, um, and I'm, I'm a historian, an economic historian, I look at things in terms of what's happened in the past. And Ronald Reagan was one of our greatest presidents, certainly in recent times, who was a Republican. Um, he had two major policy advisors at the beginning of his presidency, uh, Cap Weinberger and Al Haig. Cap Weinberger was the Secretary of Defense. Now, Cap wanted to build a very large military, and uh, he was very reluctant to use that military. On the other hand, Al Haig, who was a military man himself, oftentimes was a little bit more aggressive. Cap Weinberger was what I would call a realist, and Al Haig was sort of a proto or early neocon. Now I think Cruz is a neo, more ne leans more toward the neocons, and Trump is more of a realist. Uh, you touched on temperament, and that's what I want to talk about now, because the critics would say he does not have the temperament to be president, and they, they point to uh, his uh, proposal to temporarily ban Muslims from entering the country, the derogatory terms that he has used against women, and the, the latest episode this past re week regarding a tweeting and unflattering picture of, of um, Heidi Cruz. I, I wonder how you respond to that when people bring those criticisms up. Well, uh, um, I try to focus on policy, first of all, because that's really what I'm interested in. And a lot of the things that go on a can in a campaign are, is what I call ancillary noise. Now, I'm an old campaigner, and I care about policy, so I um, 
I try to overlook some of what people say and do on campaigns on all sides. Uh, on one, but I'll go ahead. On the Muslim immigration thing, I would say that we've had an interesting dynamic on that. Donald Trump uh, made a lot of headlines when he said, look, we shouldn't allow any Muslims into the country. There is no obligation on the part of the United States to allow um, anyone, in the, to give anyone a visa to come into the country. And actually, if you look at the statutes, presidents have wide discretion on who they allow in and who they don't allow in, just normally they don't mention it and they don't talk about what they're doing actually behind the scenes. Now, uh, Cruz did not condemn him. He said he didn't agree with it, but he didn't condemn him actually on that point. This week, Cruz has gone out, and I think he's gone a little bit further in something that I'm a little bit more uncomfortable with. Surveilling neighborhoods. Yeah, surveilling neighborhoods. And, um, and then Trump has followed him. But I would say that uh, Trump took a step which I think is measured in a, in, a, in a sitting president could have done what he suggested be done without saying anything, and nobody would ever know. Well, you talked about how you are more about policy. I wonder how, if there is a President Trump in our future, how he can get things done if already the Republican establishment doesn't support him. How can you imagine that they would support him if he were to get the office? I think that actually there are people in the Republican establishment do support him. Uh, Chris Christie, governor of Florida, senator, prominent senators from Alabama, Jeff Sessions. So um, the notion that he had, Newt Gingrich certainly says nice things about him. The notion that he doesn't have any support, I think, uh, among the establishment is simply not true. I think that there are people in the establishment who support Cruz, and um, I would say that's fine. It's a it's a, a primary. You should support who you should support, or who you think is the, would do the best job. And Republicans are doing that, and I think that's okay. Uh, what's not okay is when we come to the end of this process that we don't all come together and support the nominee. And I expect that we will. And um, my counsel to all my Republican brethren is that you need to support the nominee and we don't have one yet but let's not be burning bridges with one another because as I always like to say the party is eternal unless we decide to tear it apart all right and we will see what happens come cleveland in july thank you very much van mobley we appreciate your time today up next on upfront supreme court candidate joanne kloppenberg she answers critics who say she's soft on crime and later early voting is underway in wisconsin what you need to know before you go to the polls when upfront continues Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.